And we're going to be on in two seconds. We're not okay. there yet, but it's it preparing. We are live. Okay, great. So, hey, everybody. Um, what a great day today it is. It's, you know, in the Chicagoland area. It's a little chilly out. We had a little snow this morning. We are so excited. We have a guest today. And I would like to just turn it over to Lori and have Lori go ahead and introduce our guest. Hi, everyone. It's Happy Wednesday. We have an awesome guest today, and I am so honored to introduce her. Her name is Kiara Toledo. And she, I met her through Joan Avery, which we had interviewed a few weeks back. Um, and she's very active on our site. And she has written the, the book called um, I can't even think today. Uh, a, a blaze. I think her book is a blaze right now. No, it's called Dance, Dances. I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. And the last dance you had. Or... <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's okay. Um, I am. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. I want to talk to you about how you first started writing your books and your inspiration to do it. Okay, great. Well, thank you for both Deb and Lori to have me on their show today. Um, like Lori was saying, I met Joan Albali at the Oswego um, uh, Library a few years ago, and we swapped books. I read her book, The Dance, a fabulous, a fabulous novel. So shout out to you, Joan. And in fact, Joan and I, um, as we sat next to each other, um, we found out that we share the same birth date. So we are really kindred spirits. And through Joan, I met uh, Lori. And through Lori, I met Deb. So now it's like a big circle and we just keep mm -hmm. spreading our wings and, and encouraging other people out in the world. So I do want to say hello to everybody out there. And thank you so much for joining us um, and having me on your show. I'm very blessed to have you. Um, I started writing. I didn't really fall into writing per se. Um, I'm a middle child, and I had an old. I have an older sister and a younger sister, and um, I used to play a lot of tennis. I used to ride bikes and things like that. Um, but I was also very imaginative, and I did a lot of role playing. Um, and one day, I, I you know I used to ride my bike all the time. I used to ride to the library, and one day I discovered books. Like they were the best things since sliced bread, you know, uh, took me away to a different place. And one of my favorite uh, books that I started reading was the Nancy Drew series and the Hardy Boy series. Uh, I just fell in love with Nancy and solving all of those mysteries. And she just became my heroine. And I inhaled those books. In fact, I still have one of my favorite books Aww. is The Clue in the Diary, and it's on my bookshelf. So I really enjoyed reading her books as well as the Hardy Boy books. Um, and then as I got um, into to reading more, um, I started uh, get, uh, I bought myself a journal and I started writing, you know, notes and thoughts and things like this. This was during the preteen age, you know, and there's a lot of anger and a lot of emotions going through your body and that sort of thing. So I started doing some dabbling in writing. When I hit high school, um, I discovered Danielle Steele. Now, who doesn't read Danielle Steele? One of my favorite books is Wings, and I have that on my bookshelf, too. Um, so I started reading a lot of her books. I think I've read at least 30 of them. And then I started writing some poems and then I started writing some short stories because I was part of uh, the communications uh, group and I, I participated um, in the yearbook and I did some writing from that store, from that standpoint. When I hit college, uh, those short stories became a little bit novellas, but I had to focus on my career. Uh, my background is an instructional designer and I wrote training uh, and I did stand up training for 14, 15 years. I had a prosperous career. Um, I had to put the writing aside, um, and but then I moved away from it. And and so in 2005, I I left corporate America, and uh, and I just started writing full time. And that's where I've been the last uh, uh, many years in my writing. Um, a lot of people ask me how do I describe my writing? Um, I write inspirational and Christian drama, empowering women to discover their faith and to use their perseverance to um, overcome adversity and become heroes of their own destinies. 
I've also dabbled in middle grade fiction where I want to encourage girls to uh, develop strong morals and values and to stand up for what's right. Um, but given all that, you know, genre description, I like to tell people that I write relatable stories. I write realistic stories. You know, think of um, um, Hallmark movies or, or Lifetime movies. Mm -hmm. um, I do consider myself an empathetic writer. Um, I write about people who struggle with life decisions. And who doesn't struggle with life decisions? I mean, we, we are living in a chaotic world. And so there's always some sort of struggle. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm excited. Within the last six years, I've written four books. And I never thought that I can come this far. But God put that word in my mind. And I knew I had to push it out. You know, I often tell people I have two addictions. Um, reading and writing. If I'm not reading something, I have to be writing. Um, writing is my communication tool. And, um, and until that leaves me, until God takes that away from me, I have to keep following what he wants me to do. And it's therefore I write the type of writing that I do um, today. Um, so if you're ready, I'd like to introduce you some of the books that I've, uh, that I've written. Love it. Uh, my latest one is She Made It Matter. It just came out. Um, it's a compelling, dramatic story about one woman's fight um, to regain sobriety, find salvation, and earn forgiveness um, after years of like tremendous guilt from being abandoned by her mother when she was in her teens and then losing her older brother to cancer when she is uh, uh, losing her older brother and her cancer when she's in her 20s. It's a story about vanquishing the demons of her past and really making her life right again. Um, you know, that she, that she um, suffers and, and experiences. Um, you know, when I think about her story, uh, her name is Amanda Reynolds. It's, um, you know, it's about a, a woman who has kind of these demons and things, but it is covered by an alcohol addiction. You know, each of us have, have addictions, whether it's uh, social media, food dependencies. For Amanda Reynolds, it's her alcoholic addiction. And, you know, and, she ha and she's been masking it and covering up all these years. Um, and when I thought about this story, I had to think about my own idols and my own addictions. But I also thought about how does somebody throw their life away um, when they're constantly consumed by addiction. I thought about um, family abandonment. I thought about uh, 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 people who, who don't feel self-worthy of themselves. So all this came together with this story and and, and Amanda has to learn that she has to forgive her past in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, initially, this book was, was named, uh, titled, Make It Right, Make It Matter. Um, I went through 27 versions of this book. Um, it took me 13 years to write it, nine years in the making, and another three to, to, to edit it and get it to where it is. Um, and so when I think of the title, it's gone through 25 title changes. I think it's very appropriate because if you look at the title, she, she's a pronoun, right? If I cover that up and I say, Kiara made it matter, Deb made it matter, Lori made it matter, you made it matter. It's about starting fresh and starting new, forgiving your past and moving forward. Um, and so that's why I wrote that book. It's a culmination of It's a Wonderful Life, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and John Krakauer's uh, novel, Into the Wild. So it teaches that only in brokenness can one find the courage to start again. And so that's my latest novel, and I'm really excited um, to, to, to have that out there. So, um, and uh, let me talk about a little bit about my other novels. Uh, my first baby was Love's Perfect Surrender. And this one is a Christian romance about a troubled married couple who lose the us part of their relationship 
uh, because of a failed miscarriage and stillbirth and then the miraculous birth of their daughter born with a congenital limb deficiency who graces their lives and um, shakes their core belief in order to uh, surrender all their expectations. So this one um, um, was the one that started it all. And this one too took nine years to write. Um, and then uh, while I was writing She Made It Matter, um, in between I wrote my first middle grade book, which is Petrella, the Gillian Princess. And this one um, interweaves themes that are similar to Noah's Ark, um, Tangled, uh, um, what is the other one I'm trying to think of? Uh, Sleeping Beauty. And it's about a courageous young princess who defies rank and authority in order to follow her heart. And she learns that through this novel is that love always prevails mm -hmm. um, over evil. And, and it's, uh, my daughters actually did some uh, pictures in the book too. And that was a great one. And then my last one is a tribute to Talipia, another middle age, uh, middle grade aged book. It's about a tulip and her family who live in an oasis of tangled shrubs and vines and trees, and they're just bullied. And um, this, this tulip, kind of stands up in this forest and, and, and tries to unify, unify the forest in doing the right thing and following the right um, um, order of things in the forest. And um, I wrote this because my daughters at the time were, were getting bullied at school and I wanted to have a parable on bullying for her. Um, I also met a wonderful gentleman that it works with uh, Stand for the Silent, Kirk Smalley, if you're out there, my brother, I love you. And um, he goes to all the schools, talk about, um, about bullying. And if you purchase this book, I provide a portion of the proceeds to stand for the silent. Um, uh, Mr. Smalley lost his son to suicide and he talks about uh, uh, bullying uh, at, to each of the schools and try to not get these students to not do the things that they shouldn't be doing. To themselves because each life is precious. So um, uh, we hope we, I hope I can continue uh, providing uh, proceeds for him for that. So those are those are the books that I've written, and I hope the Lord blesses me with more books to continue writing and and encourage other people. Well, you are amazing. You're absolutely amazing, and I can't. I actually ordered one of the books for my mom for Christmas, and I sent it to her. So, I mean, everybody out there, these books are great to get for Christmas presents. And I know you could buy some on Amazon and we're going to have the links on there where you could find Yes, absolutely. Stories and stuff. And um, I know you could get them from off of Kindle and stuff too. You could, mm -hmm. if you have Kindle. But yeah, you're absolutely amazing. I am so happy we met you. This is, you know, everything in life happens for reasons. And that's what Debbie and I believe. And, you know, we are just, just blessed to have you on here because I think so many people really need this in their lives right now. They need to be reading books like this because there's so many things that are so negative in this world. Yes. And you need to know that, you know, it's okay that like the one, like the one book that you have, the one, your newest book, talking about the addictions and stuff. There's so many people that suffer with that and they're past and they don't know how to move on. And that's going to be a great book for somebody that's really struggling with that or anybody that is having anything like that but family. Well, I want to thank you. And I hope that, you know, uh, we could do more for you. Debbie, do you have any questions? I don't really have any questions per se, but I did want to say that you really like opened up my eyes to the fact of like when you spoke of how long it took you to write and you changed you know the names so many times to get it to be just perfect and you know a lot of us don't realize what it takes to I mean I certainly didn't realize like what it took to get a book to come to actually be into print and and yes. how hard and the thought process and all that you've done and where you've 
gotten the stories and maybe some of them could be identified as personal, you know, people that you know or, or whatever it is and how this came to flourish. And I think it's really awesome. And it just makes me appreciate it more so that I don't take for granted as I read a book now, whether it's your book or anyone's <laughs> book, to be honest with you, really, yeah. that like how important it is and, yes. and the message that's being communicated comes from the heart. And your messages are just amazing. You know, like um, you. I, I, I'm definitely going to pick some of these books up to read. I mean, I've made it a goal for myself to try to read more books because I feel like, you know, what we've all gone through in this whole last year, I mean, people, people need to know that there's hope and, and there's things that, you know, we all like compare ourselves to people mm -hmm. and we all do have addictions. I mean, it, it could be the silliest addiction. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that is so horrible. It could just be something that's just not good for us, you know, that we can relate to and understand, you know? And, and then also I think too, looking at what you're reading so that if we do know people that have those addictions that we, we view them differently, we don't judge them. You know, we don't yes. know why that happened. We don't know why they, they, had settled to do that you know but we but they can be forgiven you know and we need to free we also need to forgive people if if they've done different things to us yes through an addiction you know what i'm saying so i mean i think it's like it's a full circle cool thing you know so yeah. we greatly appreciate you sharing and opening up Great. thank, thank you. you so very much and um we are just so happy you know with everything and we're so happy that we could call you our friend. Yeah. <laughs> and likewise, too. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Talking to you the last couple of weeks, I felt like we've known each other all our lives, and it was just meant for that. So, well, you got me to put makeup on and lipstick, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell everybody how old your children are, your, your daughters. My, uh, my daughters now are 12 and 10. And my older daughter, my 12 year old is actually writing books. She just finished her first book um, mm -hmm. and uh, she has another eight more and she's just writing. And I feel that my, my, my place right now is to really help her hone her craft because mm -hmm. um, she is a way better writer than I am. Honest to God, um, she has the gift of, of true writing. So uh, okay. but they're 10 and 12 right now and they are my inspiration to live in the moment and be just where I need to be. Sounds awesome. great. Well, thank you so much. Yes. And um, again, you know, you guys go on and we're going to have all this information on our on our page and look up her stuff. And like I said, great, great Christmas presents. I know if you order stuff on Amazon, you'll get it in time. So yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to say have a wonderful day. Great. God bless. Merry Christmas, uh, everybody. Merry Christmas, and thank you for being with us today. <laughs> thank you so Take much. Bye-bye. Right, okay. Bye-bye.